Creativity actually uh, triggers discomfort, you know, and I firmly believe that um, integrating creativity into any process, into any organization, uh, it, it, it kind of adds value to um, a unique experiences for your customers, for your clients. And, you know, creativity allows us to do insanely great things. And one of the questions that I always ask myself is, uh, what do I want to be remembered for? You know, and that's one of the things that uh, I realized that you know, the creative process all right, actually uh, includes one that has a lot of trials and error. It also, uh, I, often of time, I observe the world, you know, identify certain patterns of behavior, uh, it generates ideas, all right, and of course it gets feedback, and that's the uh, form of action, you know, and it repeats the process over and over again. You know, and it is hard work, okay? Creativity is not an arty funny thing, you know? Sometimes it is, but most of the times, it's about hard work, you know? It's a lot of times, you know, it's not just been a sudden moment of uh, inspiration, a sudden moment of insight, but uh, uh, at times, it's, it's when you're, you know, when you're, you're creative, you're using the same mental blocks as what you normally would use, and research has shown that, all right? Uh, when we take time off, from a problem, say I'm working on a problem for, for a season of time and I realize that whenever I take time off and I go to do something else, often the time, that's the time where, where, where something happens, you know, I get a, a creative idea that comes on, you know, and then uh, you realize that, that that change becomes a catalyst, alright, change is a catalyst uh, for creativity. And uh, I could be in a bathtub, you know, I could be uh, in, in a, on a bed maybe or, or traveling on a bus. You know, and sometimes, many times, I'll be walking down the, the, the sandy beach and, and I realize that, you know, solutions come forth, you know, and that's something that, you know, it, creativity process uh, doesn't happen just one brilliant flash, but often the time, you know, it's a chain of reaction and many, many tiny little sparks that eventually uh, cause you to create a better solution and idea. All right, uh, take an example, uh, back in 1903, all right, back in history, December 8th, you know, Samuel Pierpont Langley, he was a, a government-funded scientist. And what happened was that uh, he was launching his flying machine. Uh, and what happened was, everybody know that he plummeted into the river. But nine days later, you have the Wright brothers. They are no scientists at all, but they actually took, the plane actually took off. You know, it was, it's made in history, right? Uh, and, and, and why did they succeed, whereas for a famous scientist, he failed? You know, so one of the things that we observe is that Langley himself, he hired other people, okay, because he had government funding. You know, he hired other people to do, uh, to execute his concept. Whereas for the Wright brothers, they were fixing problems. They were going through different, different little sparks, like fixing the wind shape, you know, finding out how the, 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 the wind goes through each particular wind warping, uh, 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 the, the shape of the wing, the, the design of the wing, and that, Involvement involves many, many little, little tiny sparks of inspiration and insights that led to their success. You know, and it's amazing today, uh, you know, this photo was actually taken from my iPhone on the way back from one of the flights, and you realize that technology has helped us all to just be avid photographers. You know, you can take photos anywhere using your phone, and this was uh, shot by my iPhone. Uh, I went on to, to photograph, you know, photography and filmmaking became my passion, and I was taking everything. You know, I was, uh, it never fails to, to inspire me, you know, I was taking people, uh, people lying on the bench, you know, I was taking bicycles, I was taking uh, 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 establishments, I was taking food, building, places, you know, and it became a driving force for me, you know, and uh, what happened was that creating that moment from the lens uh, really inspired me to move on and, and share with others, and that was what I was doing every time, you know, and I discovered this, that the human truth, alright, the human truth, it's one about per uh, perception of reality. You know, you will realize that, that there is something called the perceived value. All right, uh, I, have a, I have a Coke bottle here. It's a huge one. Um, 
this is something that I bought in 1995 in France, back in the back alley. And, uh, uh, but anyway, if you look at Coca-Cola, it's the, probably the number one consumer brand right now, uh, ever since, God knows when. Um, if you buy a Coca-Cola in a supermarket, it probably costs you like, what, 80 cents, one dollar? You know, when you buy it from McDonald's, it's 150 or 180. If you buy it from a cafe, it's three dollars. Wow. If you buy it from a hotel, it's five dollars. My God, what's the difference? It's still Coca-Cola, right? The content has not changed. But what has changed is the perceived value. All right, what has changed in reality it's that value that, that, that the service that they do, the way that they present it, you know, the ambience maybe, you know, and, and things like that. So, so you realize that, that when you connect culture, uh, connect creativity into culture, you know, that creativity becomes your value added services, all right, your, your perceived value, all right. Um, this was some of the things that I've been uh, working on, and uh, it, it, it's, it involves a lot of problem solving. All right, creative briefs, etc., mind mapping, and um, when you work in in uh, industry like that, uh, you were like for the National Day Parade. Uh, I was handling many, many multiple cameras at one time. Uh, I was solving a lot of problems, and one of the things that I always ask myself is that do I want to limit myself in one uh, specific medium? And I realized that no, you know, a producer that that that's just going to work on one medium, you're going to limit yourself. All right, so I was working with different people. Uh, there was a consistency, you know, in everything that I wanted to do, all right? And I wanted to make sure that the, the, the information was clearly organized, that the whole team knows what I was doing, what we wanted to portray, you know? So I was asking them, what's the project about? You know, why, why do we do what we do? You know, there's a difference when people watching the screens at the stadium, and there's also a difference for people watching the screens in the television at home. So, example, uh, I was doing it for the people in the stadium itself, and you realize that in the stadium, People want to see the close-up you know, shots. They want to see the details because they are far away. But if you're at home watching it, you want to have an overview shot. You know, and then you get different angles. You get like a wider perspective of things. You know, and, and that's about sharing ideas. You know, the images, the stories. It tells the Singapore story. You know, and, and I think that when I was doing this, connecting the dots of our Independence Day to the audience, telling the Singapore story from different angles, was one of the perspectives that I wanted to show so that people get connected, all right? Uh, one of the other things that I also do uh, on a regular basis is I ensure that there was a connection with a purpose. You know, uh, collaborating on a constant stream, you know, people who always con collaborate uh, to improve their products, to improve their communication, the services, their systems, their experiences with their customers. These are people that, that, that uh, allow their clients to see something that, hey, I didn't know that I need that, but now that I know that I need it, I would rather you know do it and pay for it, and they will pay a premium for it. Trust me, you know if they see something that they realize, my God, I need to have this so that my business grows, you know they will spend the money for it. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I, I collaborated with was uh, connecting big corporations like Sony and Panasonic and and to entrepreneurs, to companies, you know, and allow them to test new new demo sets. Like I tell Sony, you know, you got a new camera. Why don't give me this new camera to try out, okay, with the different companies? And everyone benefited because you know they see what's best. They can they you know they would like to buy this eventually, and then they realize that hey, you know I could do my review and I can also benefit from it. So that was what happened here, and we had a collaboration between uh, the several uh, big corporations with different companies. The other one that I did was for. Um, House Rabbit Society of Singapore, you see the calendar here, it's the 2012 calendar. Uh, one of the things that I collaborated with them, um, you know, is like, I look at what others are doing. I look at what others are doing, and, and in a way, um, what others are doing in different fields, all right? And cultures uh, has a value, all right? When you collaborate it with uh, people, you know, you make influences. And these are certain things that, uh, one of the reasons why we did this was to help uh, abandoned rabbits, okay, uh, especially for the year of the rabbit, uh, abandoned rabbits to find foster parents. So this was one of the projects that I collaborated uh, with House Rabbit Society. Um, these are some of the other projects that I did, uh, collaborating with uh, different workshops, uh, organizing different uh, events overseas, 
and and through this, you know, you you will grow to love what you do because uh, in this case, uh, I was taking risks. You know, I was trying to make a lot of mistakes, going through different uh, uh, places, uh, and you realize that creativity is actually a numbers game. You gotta keep trying, you know, and it is really hard work. And ideas that were built upon actions, you know, that came before, uh, really spurred on certain additional uh, solutions to your. Um, uh, problem and so my question always is: Is ideas the first thing that comes first, or is it action, or is it action and ideas? You know, it, it's it's back and forth. You know, and you realize that often the time uh, is really built on collaboration as well. Okay, uh, current projects that I've also been um, with uh, the National Heritage Board is that uh, we were doing uh, something about preservation, and one of the key things of preservation is that. You want the future generations of people to know what happened before in the past. And you, over here, you will see uh, Marina uh, Bay in the 1980s, and right now it's, it's being transformed to a garden, uh, in, in line with our vision of being a city in a garden. You know, and this is also a big collaboration. You, know, you will have a lot of uh, uh, big table collaboration, they call it, where you have different agencies uh, working together, synergizing ideas and adding value to their product. And in this case, uh, there were national parks involved and there was a national heritage board involved and we were all sitting at a big table discussing you know, what are the things that we want to document and preserve you know, for the future generations. Uh, of course, some of you may know the Bukit Timah Railway Station is no longer uh, working now. It's uh, right now the Green Corridor. Uh, same thing, this is a 1930 photo. Uh, and of course, I wasn't there to take the photo. But, but, uh, you know, but, but you know, these are certain things that we've been documenting over the years you know, and been trying to get from different sources and eventually, uh, right now, these are certain things that, 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 that is no longer you know, there today. So, um, yeah, so there is a strong belief that we have the power to transform our own lives and preserving our heritage will help the next generation to find that cultural value. All right, I see a greater need to collaborate with existing uh, uh, culture that we are in. All right, and, and in the, this digital age, it's really about uniting emotional bonds with people. You know, you guys have the, 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 the means to, to go online, to share, share on Facebook, share on, on YouTube. You know, that is a very, very powerful tool. And I believe that when we add value to that creative process, Often a time when we integrate with whatever culture we come from, you realize that that could be the real passport to long-term success. Okay, and um, you know, being a, uh, uh, been, have been, this Coca-Cola has been uh, with me for the last many, many years, and you realize that back then when I bought it in 1995, it's only 15 francs. But if you ask me how much does it cost today, I tell you that this is priceless to me. I would not want to sell it. Why? because this is an object of sentimental value. You know, it reminded me of all the friendships, it reminded me of all the hard work, of doing things with people, of the collaborating work, of the creative breakthroughs, and the developing of network of friends. You know, uh, I, 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 I can assure you that, you know, forget those romantic myths that creativity is about a one term, one time, you know, being artifali and, and talented gifts. It's more than that, all right? When you want to succeed, you know, you can't wait for that one moment of full-blown inspiration to come. All right, often a time you will never start work, you know, because if you're gonna wait for that moment, it will never happen, and you will never, you know, one day realize the successful person that you are at. All right, so with that, I thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Adrian.